And don't focus on those things. Because look what it says here in verse 4. In um, verse 6. If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a, a worthy servant of Christ. Jesus, one who is nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have, follow, follow say instruct. instruct. Say instruct. instruct. How many of you have been given the opportunity before to be an instructor? Amen? Someone in, someone in your job first day, guess what? Hey, you train them. What does that make you? Now that's tra that makes you to be a what? An instructor. <coughs> if you're an instructor, the basic thing that you do is what? Make sure that you what? You instruct correctly. You give the proper instructions. When you train someone at the job, you tell them the black and white. You don't, you don't tell them the trick of the traits. You don't tell them how can they clock out early and still get paid. Well, this is how you do, you know, you, you know, I have a connection, you know. You can leave 30 minutes early, they just clock you out. As long as you just buy them lunch. So you laughing because you've done this, right? And then you wonder why your company closed. <laughs> I thought we have good business, okay, we're all getting laid off. Because you train people the wrong way. That's what happened. That's what happened when you give wrong instructions. That's what happened when we train our kids the wrong way. The Bible says, train them while they are still young. So when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Give them the right teaching. Tell them the truth now. Because if you water, if you water down everything, if you sugarcoat everything, then that's how they're going to grow up. They're not going to know the truth. You tell them, you know, in Filipino culture, we have this saying, don't let your children talk back to you. Can you hear that? I would like to disagree with that. I would like to disagree with that. Here's what I'm going to say. Don't let them talk back to you with no respect. But teach them to talk back to you and explain themselves. Teach them to be thinkers. Teach them to tell them, Daddy, I want to go to Toys R Us. Why do you want to go to Toys R Us? Because I want to buy this. Do you have money? And said he would do this. Here's my money. Oh, thank you. And I said, here's your toy. That's not a toy. Well, that's not money you gave me. <laughs> what is the point, people? Teach them to think. Teach them to explain. When they get in trouble, give them an opportunity to confess. Just like in the court. I'm giving you 20 minutes to confess right now, and then I'm, I'm going to bargain with you. After this, it's all. Because that's what we need today. Can you hear me, man? That's why we go to church. That's why we read the Bible. We need people that can instruct us. But the question is for us also is how instructable, I don't know if that's a word, but how, how teachable are we? How teachable are you when someone comes to you and says, you know what, I think you need to change this. Because sometimes, I understand it, it's the pastor, sometimes it's the hardest part. Because we want to be gentle, firm, out of love, but at the same time, sometimes you have to do it by rebuke. So you just got to find that balance there, but at the end of the day, you're just giving instruction. Sometimes I have a tendency to be defensive. Are you with me? Well, I, I see that you didn't finish your job. Whoa! I'm not done yet. No, I'm just telling you, there's a way to do it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're so defensive. Are you with me? Husband and wife, that's why you fight so much. Because you're too defensive. Did you cook yet? Well, you know, I, I have this in the morning, this and this and this and this. And then I take care of the kids. And then I wash the clothes. And then I do this and do that. And you go on and go on. And your husband's like... Because I was going to take you out to dinner. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> it's restaurant week. What? Why is it defensive? <laughs> the hardest part sometimes, even as a pastor, is to give the instruction out of love, 
but at the same time, I don't truth. I need someone to tell me. I need someone to check me. Sometimes a pastor check me. A pastor, you need to lessen that in your teaching, or you need to lessen that in your preaching. You need to do this, do that. And you know what? I'm blessed. If no, one, if no one's going to tell me, how would I know? How many of you have the same mindset with me today? Just me? <laughs> Get your own. That's what happens. We need instruction. We need someone that will tell us the truth. And not take it as just criticism, not take it as just this person is you know, against me. No, take it as, man, this person probably care about me because he cared enough to tell me the truth. He cared enough to tell me, oh yeah, you have something in your tooth. Oh, you have something, oh, you... whatever it is. And the most successful people, they learn from what? From others. And Timothy here, the Lord says here, one is nourished by the measure of truth, teaching you to follow. Do not waste time arguing over what? Do not waste time. Third, the person next to you say, do not waste time. Do not waste time arguing over godless and old wives. What are old wives tell us? The tales that old wives talk about. <laughs> no, just the things that are just mundane. The things that you talk about all the time, but really leading nowhere. Are you with me? Godless ideas, things that you talk about with no God in it. No spiritual essence in it. In, in other words, junk food. You know, you eat junk food, there's no nourishment, even though it says in the wrapper, a good source of vitamin C. Yeah, right. <laughs> How many junk food you know that's a good source of vitamin? That's why it's called junk food, because it makes you full, but it nourishes you nothing. Be careful. Paul is telling Timothy, be careful that this you're going to talk about. Some of them, it's good to hear and good to listen to. But it's leading you nowhere. There's no spiritual significance. There's really nothing. After you talk about it, you're like... <laughs> In Tagalog, na <laughs> Nothing. There's really... It, it, didn't, it didn't edify you. It didn't edify anyone. No encouragement at all. You didn't mention about God. You didn't mention... Nothing. And Paul is saying here, don't waste your... Time, but rather, what does it say here? Train yourself to be what? Physical training is good, but training for godliness is what? Much better. Promising benefits in this life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to what? To struggle for our hope is in the we Savior of all, and particularly of all believers. Verse 11, listen to this very carefully. Look what Paul says to Timothy. Verse 11. What does it say? What does it say? I like that New King James Version says, Instruct. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. We are instructors. As pastors. Don't be too sensitive sometimes when we Nick on some things and details in that. We're not saying you're bad. We're just saying that this is the instructions that we ourselves also receive and we are under the command to do the same as you. Paul told Timothy, teach these things and insist on everyone that learn them. Look what, what verse 12 says. Don't let anyone take less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in speech, in the way you live, in action, in, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers, and teaching them. Three pointers that we're going to learn today. First one is this, in your notes today. To instruct is to construct if that if done under the guidance of the what? <laughs> to instruct is to how can you build someone how can you prepare someone 
How can you encourage someone? How can you challenge someone without giving them any instruction? How can you run a business without training program? How can you run a church without discipleship? It's the basis, basic principle of all. If you guys, how many of you are trained, physical training, right? Are we not Jeff there? Just a good example, right, Jeff? Trained for uh, Jiu Jitsu. I doubt this, that Jeff woke up one morning and says, I'm Jiu Jitsu master. <laughs> right, Jeff? I doubt that he wake up one morning and like, yo, goes to his phone, press it, and say, Siri, you can now call me Jiu Jitsu master. <laughs> okay, Jiu Jitsu master. <laughs> no pastors being here without Someone disciple them first. Amen. I won't be here if no one instruct me. Amen. And I will continue to be here without the instruction of someone. Who's instructing you and how well are you taking that instruction? Changes everything. Are you with me? If you want to be built up, if you want to be encouraged, if you want to be the best in what you do, you need instructors. I don't, I don't think anybody here can refute that. I don't think anybody here can say, you know what, I can be a champion by myself. I don't need no coaches. I don't need no trainers. You know, I'm gonna get that job. I'm gonna get that degree. I don't need no teachers. So what you gonna do? You just show up to class by yourself? Teach yourself by yourself? <laughs> hand your diploma by yourself? And then hide yourself? <laughs> Sometimes we talk too much, I want to be my own boss. You will never be your own boss. Because God is always going to be our boss. God is always going to be our, on top of us. And if we're not instructing, and, and we have to take this as out of love. There are people that are around us that's there to instruct us. There are people around us that you can actually say, Thank you Lord for this person in my life. Because I know that this person can check on me. This person can hold me accountable. Because that's the only way. If I want to be successful in what I do, I need someone to be on top of me. Can I hear an amen? I need someone. I need mentorship. I need someone that will decide, disciple me. You know, I was driving one time, road friends, and I see this big, big billboard. And it says, I want you to listen to this very carefully. It says in the billboard, Growing old is mandatory, but growing up is a choice. I think it was like a Kaiser Permanente <laughs> uh, logo. I don't know if you were in Kaiser, I don't know if you remember that. Growing old is mandatory, but growing up is a choice. The same is true in our spiritual maturity. We will all grow older as Christians, but here's the fact, but only few of us will choose to mature. Can we show that real quick? I want to dwell on that real quick. We will all grow older as Christians, but only few of us will choose to mature. Sometimes maturity doesn't always deal with age. It deals with actions. It deals with decisions that you make. It deals with your thinking. Understanding the bigger picture. And sometimes we give us such a bad rep for people saying, oh, you're, you're immature. It's okay to be immature as long as you understand that you are continuing to mature and to grow. In one point in time, we are all immature. Can I hear an amen? But get this, River Faith Church, it's not an excuse to stay there. It's not an excuse to, to act the same way over and over again, even though we know it's wrong. It's not, it, it's not an excuse for us to say, well, it's my life, I'm just going to live it. No, we're going to have accountability. 
We are first accountable to God. We are accountable to people. We are accountable to our family, especially if you're a parent. You're accountable to your children. I heard it before, oh, you've got to be ready to be a parent. There's no such thing. When parenthood comes, guess what? You don't apply in an online class and, oh man, I want to get a degree of parenthood. <laughs> no. What? God says, once that baby comes out, you're on the job training. And guess what? Now you're going to mature. Now you're going to learn how to take care not of just yourself, but of living being with bones and blood and flesh that when they fall down, they can get a bump and they can bleed and you're responsible for that. Growing up, it's mandatory people, we will all grow old. 50 years from now, we will all not look the same. Are you with me? We will not look the same. Maybe five years from now. But the question is, I hope all of us will mature together. And the church will mature together. The difference between those who will choose to mature and those who will not is their ability to take instructions well. The people who fail to acknowledge their own shortcomings and people that just don't want to hear instructions are normally the people that you see have a hard time growing.